Well, if, you, if you're all tuning in right now, the reason why I'm sitting in the menu is I went to go test Robin in Forgotten Hall. And uh, when you exit out of Forgotten Hall, it puts you in the express car, which is where the story quest begins. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I did test out Robin. I did what I wanted to do for yeah, trying her out and whatnot. So now is a good time as ever to begin the actual, like, yeah, 2.2 Panacani story quest. Yeah, and, and, yeah, I think if I load in right here, it's just gonna start the story right away, but I don't mind. I, I actually do want to start the story right now. I'm so hyped, honestly. I can't wait to see what the at the end uh, of this thing is. 12 system hours until the Charmony Festival. Oh, shit! After 12 system hours, this grand celebration will commence with much fanfare. Boot Hill's on the Express already? Oh shit. Yeah, this is a Trailblaze mission. It starts as soon as you land on the Express. 12 system hours until the Charmy Festival, Astro Express. Yeah, what the fuck? Why is Boot Hill fucking holding up Don Hong? <laughs> I'm sorry, Fluffy. <laughs> Fluffy. I really have something urgent to attend to, so I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. There's the boy. Also, I love that he got like a like a, a crosshair in his eyes. That is super cool looking. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. <laughs> I also have to remind you that I can transform into a dragon at will. Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. Uh, you don't say hello by pulling a gun to somebody's head, Boot Hill. <laughs> For the last time, state your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill. Yeah. And I'm a galaxy ranger. Also, his fucking shark teeth as well. I, I love his design so much. It's a shame my Robin pulls went so badly. Otherwise, I could have pulled for him as well. Galaxy Ranger. Yeah, an actual, an actual Galaxy Ranger, not that freaking phony <laughs> down on Pentagon right now. Also, how did he get here? How did he get in the Express? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off grid for too long. The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. Also, yeah, that's a Cool thing as well, they, they follow the hunt as well, like the Sienjo does. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? Yes. <laughs> yes, I, that's, you, you define what a hijacking is. Put that gun down. It probably is. Pardon my frankness, but there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status. And none of them are pretty stories. Oh, this Oops. is hilarious. Oops, I, I didn't. I, I skipped the last part. Pardon my frankness, but there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status, and none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. Um, yeah, I, I think Boot Hill was the one talking to Black Swan over the radio. I, I believe that is him. The tale that this bunch of Fool spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by Dr. Primitive, and they're in some valley. Man, who is this Dr. Swords. Primitive, and why does he keep coming up? <laughs> of course, I know you won't believe me, which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real nameless. Hello, have you? Part of anybody else traveling on a flying space train. <laughs> See the bullets in this gun? Nine millimeter, an eternal classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. Wait, imposter like that one? What, pom-pom? I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. Wait. If you're an imposter just like that one. Was he look was he talking about Pom Pom or wait? Oh no, is it, or, or is he talking about Akron impersonating him being a, a galaxy ranger? That's just the way it goes, so you all have to first prove yourselves. Huh? 
Where are you going? Uh. Hmm. Recognize this? Oh shit, it's a Jade Abacus. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the shit um Jing Guan gave us? Like, and we can call him up whenever we need his help. <laughs> We're gonna call him right here in Pentagon because we need his help right away. <laughs> It's a model fudger. Model fudger. Caroline <laughs> Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys. Hoyo. Hashtag let Boot Hill swear. <laughs> I love how he's technically swearing, but not actually swearing. <laughs> I love him so much. Hmm. He seems like such a fun fudger? character. No, Pom Pom, no. Don't say that. No. This is the Jade Abacus gifted to the Express by the Xianzhou Lofu's general, Jing Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Xianzhou Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. Not bad. I love the way he talks as well. I love, I love his personality so much, but... Man. And across these sprawling stars, a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of cloud knights. Now, I reckon that'd be one fudge inside to behold. That'd be one fudge inside to behold. <laughs> now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. But... I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is easy as pie. All right, then. Feel free to toss any questions my way. And let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, still ain't too late to show me the door. <laughs> also, I can't help but feel like... Like he... His design is like so similar to Arlequino. Like, part of me feels like Boot Hill is like, like somewhat like Arlequino's long lost brother or something. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 just super funny that like two characters that have like a black and white hair design come out at the same time. <laughs> it, it's the hair, yeah. It's definitely the hair that looks a lot like Arlequino. Other than that, there's basically no similarities between them. And why would I play along if I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger? You stand to lose nothing. All right, then. Tell me. What kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> oh, my friend. This question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with. Everyone's on their own fated path along the hunt. With their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so... Welcome among such so-called universal values. Mm, this reply does not instill trust. <laughs> it only makes your predicament more... precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Yeah, yeah, I love, yeah, I love all the little badges all over his his shirt as well. His design is so cool, and also the bullet earring that is very, very cool. Never bully the weak, never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them. The hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? You catch my drift? I love the way he talks. His, his voice is so good. His voice actor is also, like, super funny to watch as well. I recommend you, like, go check out his, like, Twitch streams and whatnot. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinaconi for a matter. But I don't have an invite. Yeah. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow <laughs> the Nameless's identity. The entire cosmos knows your guests of the family. 
strangers also esteemed guests? Oh, you've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. Uh huh. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. A son of a nice lady posing as one of us. Son of a nice lady. I'm Penicone right now. My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all mimetic organisms, uh, appearing one moment and gone the next. Uh, she scares the fudge out of me. <laughs> Still, she gave me some vital info. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Yep. Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron. Yep. And according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. <laughs> That's impossible. Oh, no, it's very much possible, Donung. <laughs> That's what I said. Ah, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? Yeah, how do you become like a self-annihilator again? I think it's like what you pass by annihilate and just survive, right? And then you basically become a self-annihilator. I think that's how it's done. I'll have to check the, the data bank <laughs> to, to read that again, but I'm pretty sure that's how you become an emanator of nihility. Then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which, for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. An elation emanator? His appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. He ran into an elation emanator. That's an emanator of like Aha, right? Of the mass fools. Well, not necessarily the mass fools, but damn, an, an elation emanator. I really want to see what they they are like. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and galaxy rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. To reckon that nihility emanators don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. Hmm. So... Do you understand now? Your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. Uh, well, not you really. Believe me, you'd best send a message to them, but I'd advise you to move fast. Yeah, we're not really in danger. That that emanator is a friend of ours, actually. We don't know what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true, and that Acheron. <sighs> Who knows what she intends to do? Nope, she's a friend now, so you don't need to worry. <laughs> uh. Meanwhile. Holy shit, yep, the, the giant fucking Acheron slash. Uh. That's not up to you. Who the fuck? Who are you, kid? Did you know? People who come to the land of dreams for the first time. They'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. And then they will unanimously raise their heads to gaze at the sky. Who is this? The, the harmony? Be it reality or what dream, the staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Since the day that the Golden Owl was completed, it's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. I'm guessing these are the consequences of us fucking, <laughs> of our battle against Aventurine. But now this night sky has been mercilessly severed, died with the mist the Miss Nihility. event happened within the course of a single slash of a blade. Okay, yeah, so they pretty much know she's an emanator at this point. A single slash of a blade. 
isn't really accurate. <laughs> it was actually two blades, just that the second one was faster. That's not the point. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing. Yeah. I Those are the same birds that were with Sunday. For the sake of Panicone and the peace. This has to be like either Sunday himself or no Sunday got killed. Killed, quote unquote. Or the Harmony themselves. The planet of festivities has no place for you. A puppet of naivety. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to tread the illuminated stage. Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Yes, please. Panacone's dream master. Oh. Never mind. I thought it was like the harmony of self speaking. No, no, no. Dream master. That was my second guess, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's just another reason that you can't stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is the real me. Who are these people? Is the Dream Master fucking controlling people? The hell? We are one. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring Jeez. are my eyes, ears, and mouths, spreading joy across dreams. That's a fucking lot of people. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven. In my stead. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. Yes, that's exactly what I'm asking you. <laughs> I am glad that you're an understanding one. Uh oh. Alas, the music stopped. I'm not asking. Oh boy, I'm forcing you out. If you think you can. Oh boy. <laughs> Are you threatening me? I mean, you saw what she can do. You really think you can just push her out of here and just call it a day? I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually when faced with my questions, most people retort, why can't I? The result has invariably been that they can't. You are confident. But be reminded, the family is forgiving, but not weak. The chords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply, when the blade is unsheathed for even a hair's breadth, you will never be able to escape the Eternal Centurion's wrath. The Eternal Centurion's... Who the heck's the Eternal Centurion? I... Wait, have you heard that before? I, I, I can't help but feel like that name's familiar. 137 individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once severed my wings and those who immolated my body. Remember what they said about the harmony being corrupted? Oh yeah, true. I just that the eon got absorbed. I forgot which eon it is, but it's the one that I has the eye staring. The eye. Wait, you mean Ina? I think the the order, I believe. I think that's the one you're talking about. Oh yeah, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday said it. Okay, he said it's either doom or hell. Okay. 
And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. Okay, sorry, Dream Master. I know, like, you can just control people at will, but why are you talking through a kid of all people? Like, the least intimidating NPC you could have chosen. And you will die. <laughs> I mean, all of you will. Fucking cold. All of you will die. <sighs> But that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Pentacle are of different worlds. Those born on the far bank cannot seek solace across the river leave and never return well oh. the radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright luring in tricksters wrongdoers and criminals but even the harmony itself will never welcome the self annihilator of nihility well, that's just bad news, then. That means we won't have Acheron's help in the dreamscape anymore. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything. Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. I just imagine Akron's just already far away at this point. She's already like walked out the room and everything. <laughs> and he's just still monologuing as if he, she was still there. <laughs> Akron, a befitting name. Oh. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the harmony. Oh. Whatever your intentions may be. I foresee only one outcome. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Hello, Macaron. Switching to Robin's POV? At the same time, gold. We're. Attention, please. The unusual event that occurred oh, shit. We're actually going to see what happened to Robin now. Hey. No I hear you hear that on the left, guys. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop jamming to the song. It's too catchy. Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky, and I even caught one of them. But it vanished in an instant before my very eyes. Excuse me. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? What the fuck? Wait. Oh, Miss Robin, am I seeing things right? Wait, how are you back in the real world already? <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just those chips you normally see everywhere. The green ones? They fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Oh. Miss Robin, <laughs> oh, she's trying to cover up what happened. Those chips were all part of a performance? But, but I really... Shh. This technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival. But it seems it's been leaked. Yeah, the Aventurine fucking ch chip frame before Acheron uh, beat, beat Aventurine. Can you help me keep this secret? The raining chips were supposed to be part of my act. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, I see. Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Thank you. 
As appreciation. Nope. I like to give you a token gift. <laughs> nope. I uh <laughs> I should have known when it had the question mark on Robin's POV question mark. Nope. This is Sparkle. <laughs> I, I I I was I was curious. It's like no, no way Robin got back this early on her on her, on her own. Not nah, Sparkle. Oh this button is When you push it, it will blow up all the panicani. <laughs> It at just the right moment in the celebration, there could be an unexpected treat in store for you. Oh yeah, not, not the tone of her voice is even changing some more. All right, it looks like there are other guests who are also confused. I'll have to excuse myself. Please enjoy the dreamscape. So many people talking about it. <laughs> the commotion at the theme park definitely made waves. Ro Robin question mark. The fool always rings twice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, guys. It's totally me, Robin. Uh, don't worry. I won't tell anyone. I can't wait for your performance, Miss Robin. <laughs> I, yeah, I love that the fucking question mark is there. Let me actually look at the, the quest line. Let me see here, actually. Yep. Robin question mark. Okay, so we're... Damn, we have a whole ass arc with with her. And then also with the trailblazer too, obviously. But yeah, I wanted to say this at first, but yeah, the quest has officially begun. And I, yeah, I did want to start it right now, but <laughs> I wish I could have started it with like an intro and everything. But eh, better late than never that we just go ahead and just do this. Okay, this first gifts to comfort the people. Also, right, let me just get this out of the way. The family promised they would protect the guests within the dreamscape, but I witnessed a group of organic life forms making their way to the theme park. And soon after, a rip tore through the sky, <laughs> and black rain started leaking out of the void. The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. And it's true that an uninvited guest has unexpectedly entered the dreamscape. However, their target is not the ordinary guests, but the ambassadors of the IPC. The family will certainly ensure that the safety of the guests is of the highest importance. Miss Robin, I know the blood. They're not even surprised to see her. <laughs> off the theme park and has control over the situation, but it won't resolve the problem. The family can try their best to protect their reputation, but as a guest, I don't wish to gamble with my life. You don't wish to gamble, but that's the whole reason you came to Pentagon. It is gambling everywhere. But as you can see, sir, no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident. Perhaps the dreamscape is not as perfect as promised, but there's no place safer than dreams under the family's rule. I believe you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people would be able to walk away from it? Hmm. I could stay here, but keep in mind, guests come to Penacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a conflict between the family and the IPC, so let's not have any more unnecessary incidents. Also, I do love to can still hear Robin's freaking music in the background. Also, I do want to wonder, why is Sparkle doing this? Why is she going around as Robin comforting the people? This doesn't seem like her M.O. Of course. Oh, no, she's just dis dispersing gifts. Right, right so never mind. No in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies, the family has arranged this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. What does this gift do? I could stay here. They're not even gonna ask what the gift does. Yeah, okay, the music's like playing here. Sure you're okay. Also, hey, look at this fucking NPC just fucking busting it down. <laughs> Love all these like little animations, by the way. Also, hey, you Bloodhound fan members again. It's you again, the one who fucking tried to bust me. Hello. May I ask what happened here? Nothing to be worried about. There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. Hey, are you a fool? 
You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Huh? I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I've just been transferred to the blood. This lady has no respect. I'm still not too used to working on the streets. I, I didn't realize it was you. I, I'm so sorry. Hey, don't sweat it. You guys have a tough job. I know how it is. How's the situation looking? Oh, we've sealed off the theme park. Most guests are used to bizarre phenomena in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. Yeah, sure. Rest assured, Miss Robin will intensify our patrols to ensure that no incidents occur. I trust you guys. But regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? It's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Is it true that the IPC's ambassadors came with ill intent? And that Galaxy Ranger who easily cut through the sky? <sighs> Miss Robin, to tell you the truth, everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Pentacony have already been causing unease for everyone. Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. The planet of festivities has indeed run into some trouble. Uh. <laughs> Representative from the IPC. He's trying to regain ownership of Pentacony and is prepared for a hostile takeover. That's true. That's another thing that they're trying to do as well, right? Or like, yeah, get the IPC to take ownership over Pentacony. And like, I believe Topaz and Jade are like on the case now that not that Adventurine has uh, done his part. <laughs> The result of the failed negotiations is as you see it now. No wonder. So this is the main reason why the IPC staff are banned from entering the dreamscape. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? Nah, he went to Nihility Zone. Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts. <laughs> and I'll have something to show for it soon. However, I think, uh... <laughs> the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. Yeah, uh, I think Sunday is busy tracking his own whereabouts. He doesn't know where the hell he is right now. <laughs> also, right, yeah, they also gambled their own cornerstones to, to uh, get Venturing to do his deed. Please be assured, Miss Robin, we take our orders seriously. We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. Thank you for your hard work. If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, please tell them on my behalf that protecting the dreamscape requires everyone's help. I just finished the story. It's time to see your reaction about the story. Yeah, I'm excited for the story, actually. Also, yeah, thanks, Yoshimura, for stopping by. Yeah, I, I feel like this story is going to end off on a really, really good banger. This is supposed to like be the end of the Panacony arc, and then 2.3 is the epilogue. So, yeah, can't wait to see how this all ends. This is a small gift prepared by the... <laughs> Here's another bomb button. There's one for you too. Please, open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. I can't believe I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait, I am in a dream. <laughs> yeah, you are. If trouble comes knocking on our door, we're not afraid to go to war. Rest assured, the Dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound family. Okay, you just say the same things. Yeah, I find that like very like a very clever strap by Aventurine, honestly. It's just yeah, Sunday just have the mistaken like Jade for Aventurine and, and they look so similar you can barely tell the difference. Unless like you are true like gym connoisseur, which Sunday is not, thankfully. Otherwise he would have seen like just right through us. Okay, but here you go. Robin? That's the renowned cosmic superstar, Miss Robin! That's me. Yeah, totally that's me. To meet a fan here. I'm honored. Welcome to Pentacony, a world filled with wonderful dreams. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin. Sh shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Preparation is important, but the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family, 
It's only right for me to come forward and offer my apologies to everyone. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Yes. <laughs> everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far-fetched. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. Uh. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? That generous gentleman? What? Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, Venturine. Oh, I can see he was distributing freaking gems for information. Everyone, please do not panic. I believe that the family will give everyone a satisfactory answer in due time. Actually, yeah, now that I think about it, I think he is one of the NPCs that received gents for venturing. Even if you say so, Miss Robin, it's hard to believe. <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? <laughs> never ending. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. <laughs> hold it in, Sparkle, hold it in. <laughs> Miss Robin? Still, I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Yep. <laughs> Got it. It sounds so weird to hear Robin speak with such malice in her voice. Uh... Huh? What was I just doing? And, uh, who might you be, miss? What? What? Was the memories altered? Here, take this, oh. little guest. This gift has been specially prepared yep, for it's you. Yep, it's Sparkle. <laughs> In case you haven't caught on by now. <laughs> Make sure to take good care of it until the opening of the Charmony Festival. Then, when the show reaches its climax, press the button together with the others around you. <laughs> you never know. Something very exciting might happen. Oh, and that's the end of uh, Sparkle's part. Okay. Fact, where it all began. Hey! You entered the golden hour from this place. And it is also from here where you will enter the true Pentacone. Yes, but I can, but yeah, this this part is what I'm looking forward to the most. The fucking Sam Firefly stuff. We need to acknowledge that. Also, yeah, Sparkle's part was just handing out shit to NPCs. Also, yeah, for like the longest time, like, yeah, Sparkle's just taking a backseat to like the whole story. Now she's like actively participating, so. I wonder she, what she's up to, but hey, Firefly Sam, <laughs> what's with that cool ass suit of yours? It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. As you might have heard, I also go by another name. Stellaron Hunter Sam. Whoa. Oh, oh, wow, there's actually like numbers to like these dialogues now. <laughs> Are you all right? You lied to me. Are you Firefly's soul? Are you all right? I'm fine. Sorry, I hope I haven't scared you. Check the log, you missed something? Did I? Yeah, I, I did read that. Yeah, but you entered the true panic on these, like part, like the land of exiles. I, I did read that. What, did I miss something? Yeah, we entered the golden hour from this place, and it's also from here where you will enter the Panagoni, the the true Panagoni for real this time. But man, I honestly do want to give Firefly a hug. Honestly, she's, like after seeing her get fucking in bail, I feel like we should just rush over and give her a hug. I know you have many questions. Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? Yeah. Uh -huh. When I was caught by that meme. In that instant before it killed me, I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. So, following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. <laughs> That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations, drawing everyone to the Dreams Hotel. I intended to call upon death before you arrived. To solve the riddle using more direct means. And then invite you to join. However, contrary to my wishes, I couldn't defy the script. 
And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. It is how you see now. I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria miasma it exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. Then got turned into goo. But after the momentary numbness subsided, I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. Beneath the dreamscape of Panacone lies another, more chaotic, more primal memory zone. A primal memory zone. Its name? Land of the Exiles. Land of the Exiles. So, then I returned to the hotel in the dreamscape, hoping to tell you of its existence. Yet I, I, I could not reveal my own identity. So I could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield. Which is why you beat the shit out of me. <laughs> and after her, all my attempts proved futile. Yeah. It wasn't until not long ago when a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream, causing you all to fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape. Oh, that's how we... Okay, so that's how we ended up here. ...to awaken you and your companions one by one. So, Akron Slash got us to come here, essentially. I was, like, wondering, like, how did we end up here after all that? Should we still be in the middle? No, it's just Akron alone there now. And, and that's it. That is all that's happened so far. I completely understand. I'm completely confused. <laughs> uh, no, I understand. I know it's tough to believe all this without reservations. I just want to say you are very close to the final answer. Just one more thing needs to be done. And then I can prove it to you. Now, let's leave this place. Please close your eyes. Oh, close my eyes. What are you going to do? You're going to fucking shoot me and kill me? <laughs> Take uh. a deep breath and visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. And remember, you must not open your eyes at all times. Three, two, one. One. Uh. Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived. Oh, death? What, who? As a piercing screech and a thick, ferocious surge of memory crashes into your chest, churning and ravaging, your consciousness becomes like scraps of paper, caught in a whirlpool, breaking apart, dissolving and dispersing within the turbulent, muddy current. Okay, yeah, we, we got killed by death. I think. A number of voices resonated throughout the symphony of memoria, like roaring thunder, and among them, one echo stood out with exceptionally exceptional clarity. You knew it came from the girl beside you, your heart... Your heart's beating to the same rhythm, peaceful and even more peaceful. Until in that quick darkness, memories ripple into existence. Uh. I never knew you could do this. Whoa, what the? Blade? Blade in a suit? Hot damn. Where freaking are we? Also, yeah, this stuff right here, is that our corruption? Like, her sickness taking over? Hot damn, Blade, I didn't know you could drive. <laughs> driver's license? I do. <laughs> what? How? That is... surprising. <laughs> what? There are no cars on the Cienjo, are there? I, actually, wait, no, I guess we can count the Starskiff as cars, but still. <laughs> Why? Because this is Japella, the city of sins. Oh, they're in Japella right now, okay. No, it's nothing. I'm just Thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? Nah, it's good. I can't die anyways. I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. <sighs> I'm not so sure about that. Slow down a bit. Now I really want to see Blade's motto of like a suit and die. <laughs> Infiltration is over. Feel free to activate Sam anytime you like. 
But there is still some time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. Okay, so they're outside of Panacani right now, I think. Yeah, Japela, which is the, 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 the location where uh, Kafka did her atrocities, uh, as well as the rest of the Celeron Hunter gang. Okay, so she still can transform to Firefly in the overworld, she, just not for long. She has to activate the suit at some point. A long silence ensued. Neither of them brought up any topics, seemingly accustomed to this silence. It wasn't until much later that a soft sigh once again broke the quiet in the car. Such a long tunnel. <sighs> Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Japella Brotherhood. I, is that also part of the script? It's in your script too. Sorry. I didn't notice. <laughs> Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. God, Blade, you can just stand to be a little nicer, don't you think? I told you before. It's a bad habit. What about you, then? Is this the moment you finally find the death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? I don't know. I'm just trying to make conversation. It's it's awkward. <laughs> you're not a good you're not a good talker. <laughs> because I'm currently in a car with a sleep deprived driver. <laughs> I just want to get there in one piece. <sighs> this car has full self driving capabilities. I'll just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? <laughs> Hey, don't take everything so seriously. Yeah, come on, lighten up, lady. Elio would always say there's only one type of destiny. The inescapable type. He can see the future, and we... Likewise, are aware of our predetermined end. But before that moment arrives, we can still choose what we do. But we all have this right, don't we? After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. The Panacone. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. So that's how she got here. I hope you find whatever you seek there, be it answers. Or salvation. See, there you go, Blade. That's all you have to say. You you can be nice for a change, can't you? Like, come on. You can be nice sometimes. Uh. Yeah. Glad to see you're safe and sound. Hey! Mr. Yang, you're here too? That voice just now. Is this... Miss Yang, you're here too? Close your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't it incredible? The monster that we have always known as death is actually the guardian of the land of the exiles. I never would have thought. <laughs> it abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. Who would have who would have freaking thought that that deaf creature was actually the good guy for once? The question what the hell has been perplexing us does death really exist in the dreamscape appears to be a cognitive trap uh -huh. that was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dream Flux Reef. Dream Flux Reef. Every emergence hmm. of that meme is related to the Watchmaker. Since Dream Flux Reef is where it brings its captives, it's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in this place. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. And this place looks like the complete opposite of happy. But from the whispers of the residents, 
We've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. Yeah, him. What what about him? It's that man again. Always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Though that does save us the trouble of looking for him. Oh, wait, no, he's here. He's right here. Okay. Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. Uh, should we call Don Hung or something? You know, I feel like we need his help at this point. The real dreamscape. The land of the exiles. Oh, hey, sticker. Before we go, should we speak to everyone first? Yeah, of course I'm going to speak to everybody. Also, what the... Oh, there's a balloon just lying down on the ground. Also, hey, new area. Oh, and also, that also means new birds, apparently. Snotty bird. Okay, get it and get out. Yeah, it seems like all these areas you need to search for, like, all, all the bird types. Yeah, let me look around here. Oh, there's a chest over there as well. Let me collect the sticker first, though. Lost Diary Vagrant. Oh, no, so a chest. All right. Yeah, how big is this map? Okay, um, somewhat big, but I, I'm guessing this expands later on to, like, that place we see, like, later on. Oh, yeah, the vibe of this place is, like, totally different. So, what's up, Firefly? Sam? I am really sorry for waiting until now to tell you everything. Why couldn't you reveal your true identity? Two reasons. Firstly, the script. Uh-huh. In the future that Elio saw, Sam and the Astral Express's confrontation was inevitable. I tried to break the shackles of the prophecy, but this is as far as I could go. That aside, there were also my personal motives. I wished to travel with you as Firefly, and not Sam. Hmm. I gotta point out like a certain theory that I have heard. That people that, um... Before, like, we were traveling along with Kafka and everything, because, you know, Kafka's quest, Blade t did tell us we were traveling with Kafka before we were put into, the, like, the Celeron thing and everything. Some people have theorized that we've actually been very close with um, Firefly here, aka slash Sam, when we were part of the Celeron Hunters. But then, yeah, all our memories went when we got, uh, yeah, but got the Celeron implanted into us and everything. Okay, but it's all right. I didn't take it personally. This is still hard for me to accept. It's all right. I didn't take it personally. And besides, <laughs> you being Sam makes it kind of cool, actually. Thank you. Uh, did the Sound of Hunters one also want a piece of the legacy? Elio only gave me one instruction. Allow the Astral Express to pursue the Grand Legacy. It means that the Watchmaker's legacy holds great significance to trailblazing. And to you. Elio's scripts used to revolve and expand around certain specific Stellarons. But with your appearance, this condition has apparently ceased to be appropriate. Hmm. Perhaps he also saw the impossible in the future. So who exactly is Sam? Do you still remember that medical cabin I told you about? Okay. Sam. That's what I thought. That's the suit was it keeping her alive. Cavalry of Glamoth's firmament frontline. A Firefly Type 4 tactical heavy assault mech. A strategic assault mech, aka Sam, in short. It is the cradle of my vitality. And the meaning of my birth. And for the longest time it was. How I should have looked to the rest of the world. I'll see a glamour. That's the like plain ornament said. <laughs> I, I am aware of that. Okay, let's talk later. The time scale of Dreamflux Reef differs from reality, so we mustn't lower our guard. You're sensitive to memoria. A slight misstep, and you could get lost in this memory zone. Hmm. 
What do you mean get lost? And also, how do we get back to the real dreamscape if, that, if that's the case? Like, are we just trapped here until we like, figure our way out? Or we, we kill ourselves here, then we just <laughs> go back to the actual dreamscape? Hmm. Also, yeah, that, can't forget about Daddy Well over here. Something on your mind? Let's talk about it. Acheron's Blade Slash. No wonder Miss Acheron is so averse to drawing her blade. It's hard to imagine such terrifying power could reside in an ordinary sheath. If it weren't for the fact that Aventurine's power originated from the preservation, the entire dreamscape would have been affected. Don't mm. feel burdened by this. Even without that Stellaron inside you, Aventurine would still have found other methods to accomplish his goal. Let's just believe in Miss Acheron. And given her prowess, I don't think we've got anything to worry about. What are your thoughts on Gallagher? During your investigation, he shared a vital piece of information. Yep, Mikhail. The former watchmaker who collaborated with the family to construct the Penacone we're familiar with today, had a falling out with the family for specific reasons. But this is precisely where the problem lies. You were clearly investigating a murder. So then why, as a security officer, is he changing the subject to talk about his past with the watchmaker? True, that was a weird way to take the conversation. <laughs> and now, with Firefly mentioning his name again, it's hard not to be suspicious. Regarding the Firefly and the crew... I hope you've regained a little composure. Fuck, I pressed four on accident instead of three. Something on your mind? Hang on, I'll just stick to clicking, just normally. Before we found you, she'd already revealed her Stellaron Hunter identity and shared a lot of information. Who would have thought that the Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl? Yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> for her, this is a secret that she cannot allow others to know. And for everyone else, case, it means she's he's no longer a husbando. To cooperate. But... She didn't reveal all her secrets. I just can't shake the feeling that her situation is different from that of the typical dreamer. And I hope that doesn't lead to any dangerous predicaments. Alright, let's I hope keep going. Regained a little composure. We'll move out when you're ready. I'm ready. Also, let me look around here for a bit. So, oh, there's another bird. Behind is Mr. Shelf. Over here is Sir Trash Pack. <laughs> what are these just random dialogues? The trash pack is mine! Give me your trash. Thanks. Wait, no, that's not trash, that's fleeting happiness. No, I don't want that. No. <laughs> Damn it. Roll behind the door. Yeah, this is just a lot of shit we can check out here. What might find a Grady R rated movie? <laughs> Could be horror or perhaps. Eh, probably not anything else. Also, yeah, some other people are here, too. Darn it. Uh, those were darn good products and robbers took them all. Shit, oh, I'll get this robber in this, in this town. Yeah, geez, so all these people have just been killed by the Mimianic entity and just been transported Keep here. straight down this alley and it'll lead to an elevator. Nope. I didn't mean to cut it off there. The shopkeep overheard some faint voices asking him to change the channel so they could watch Clocky or Origami Bird's Adventures. Of course, the, job, the grumpy shopkeeper wouldn't allow this. He was trying to make a sale. What were those kids doing him causing him trouble? Uh, okay. I didn't mean to look at the TV there. I meant to just open the chest, but I guess I pressed too quick. What's down here? Oh, another bird. Wow, these birds are really easy to find. Okay. Yeah, there's a, like a shit ton of vagrants here. Hang on, I'm gonna take a detour here because, yep, there's a chest right here. You're just a couch. The sofa something catches your attention for um, some unknown reason, like a spotting a star on a rainy night. But why? It's obviously just a plain old sofa with a flashy uh, spiral spray system or awesome compound transformation setting. Unless it's a sofa you can sit on. Sit on me, sit on me, sit on me. The sofa calls out to you. Uh, I don't know if I do. You hastily plop yourself on the sofa, all your troubles dissipating away like a smoke in an instant. If only you could just keep sitting here. 
momentarily something whispers in your ear. Uh, so it's time to go. Yeah, I, I don't know why I can sit down there, but all right. Also, there's a TV here. Oh, and a map here as well. Oh. There's also something inside the map. I marked a treasure for you. Guess what I can see on your two giant styles close. I almost gave away the answer. Oh, it's like right in the middle. Okay, between like the two towers. Okay. Keep a lookout for chest then. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Why are you just tap dancing away? Also, what's this clocky mark here? This picture is pretty accurate. With a nose but no eyes. And the clue... The two clock hands are almost masterfully drawn. Of course, you can rule out the graffiti has been used to replace road signs and signposts in hopes of luring travelers to some sort of secret area. Oh wait, there's something here. Give me that. Also, there's a pepeshi right here for some reason. And he's freaking drinking so glad. Hey, put that down. You're way too young for this. Actually, I don't know how old pepeshis are. I assume, I assume they're like just super young. Okay, but what's here in this alleyway? Whoa, like whoa. On Reef. Oh god, its eyes are moving, that's creepy. Oh, there's a bird here too. Damn, I found like six birds already. Okay. Oh, I guess I just have to look at it, maybe. The clocky finger is pointing towards the sky, but the skies in the Dream Flux Reef are obscure by the lights of dreams. Does he want to look up an admiration of the beauty of the dreams, or is he mocking their hypocrisy? Or perhaps he's guiding you upwards in search of secrets of this place. Hmm. Oh, but I got a sticker out of that. Okay, it's saying different texts, but I don't think it really matters too much. Yeah, that is uh, somewhat creepy, honestly, in a place like this. Also, hey, uh, book. Give me that. Oh, and okay, this is the elevator. Okay. Going up. Yeah, God, this place is super different from the rest of Panacani. I mean, true, like, this is the real dream after all. Hey, Firefly, <laughs> it's your signature song. Unbelievable. Uh. To think there's a settlement of this size within the dreamscape. And all beyond the family's reach. The atmosphere in this fortress is uh, pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. Yeah, this just seems almost depressing. When I first saw it, I was in awe too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the 12 dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Hmm. Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Hmm. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. So I can believe this is a thing, a, a refuge from the facade of lies in the golden hour? Yeah, this is the truth of the yeah, the true dream that the family has made. No in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Hemoglobin it's honestly the key yeah, frightening how different of a contrast it is. Like yeah, everything just looks so dirty. At the end of this road and you'll reach the trade district. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. No. In the Come with us. I'll try and locate Gallagher. Sure. Let's reconnect later. I guess we're splitting off for now then. Letting her go was the right decision. Oh. Further observations huh? are needed before we decide whether to trust her. Uh, first, 
There is someone I need to talk to. Yeah, that's someone I need to talk to, too. Misha! Clocky, what are you doing here? Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed him. Yep, I saw him right away. Who? A familiar face? Yep, I saw him right away. Right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? Oh, well, never mind. Well, it seemed too. Acheron severed the beautiful dream. We'd better check, just to be sure. Hmm. Uh, don't worry, Firefly. I will pull for you when your banner does come out. I just hope it goes better than my Robin pulls here. Also, hey, uh, <laughs> a sticker in the trash can. My favorite kind of sticker. Also, yeah, there's more emotion absorbing stuff here as well. Also, hey, we got a little, uh, we got a little bar here as well. Hi, Jesse. Uh, tell me more about this bread. <laughs> uh, yeah, what can I buy from you, actually? I can change your emotions too. Polychromatic sourness. Uh, it just looks like a jar of pickles. I'll take one. Authentic salsa juice. Ew, that looks just like a worse version of Soul Glad. And then ha Halovian winged burger. Uh, is that supposed to be chicken or what is that? I'm not, I'm not even gonna question what that is. Yeah, I'll just take all that food and go. Thank you very much. What the fuck? A, a cello is talking to me? Welcome. Ooh, don't tell me we got an August visiting today. I heard a lot of people are coming from the dreamscape because of accidents. You look to be the same. Oh, yeah, I guess there are sentient music music instruments in the uh, dreamscape. Um, what do you sell? Oh. Shit, just a bunch of uh, music tracks. Hell yeah, I'll take them all. Uh, broken, <laughs> broken strings roar. It's just a guitar with a tongue, and sound of satisfaction. I might as well grab that too. Why not? Yeah, the original salsa juice it looks honestly very unappetizing. Also, there's more of these clocks here that we can fix. Evil ticker. Oh boy. <laughs> Hang on. We gotta do some uh, some puzzling here. Okay, these puzzles seem a bit different. Uh, uh, oh wait. Okay, there we go. I get this one. And then you need to go over to that one. Uh, oh, just like that. Uh, then we need to get over there. Wait, Clocky, can't you just go there right now? Oh, wait, no, no, he needs, a, like, a platform in front of him. Okay, then we need to go all the way to the other side, which is just like this. Easy. Is the original so glad before it got improved? Okay. No wonder it looks so crap. <laughs> okay, give me, give me the thing inside of you. Yay, more eerie building blocks. Yeah, don't uh, don't mind me just exploring around for a bit. I want to just map out this whole area before we uh, pro progress here. Also, I noticed these manhole covers have, like, things I can interact with. But for the sake of time, I think I'll avoid them for the meantime until I uh, get further in. Also, hi. <laughs> hi, birdie. <laughs> he, he thinks the fucking drain was a sauna. Alright, come on, get out there, birdie. Uh, yeah, let's also activate the space anchor, too. Hey! A Robin fan I see here. <laughs> Good to see Robin's presence just ever persistent throughout the, the whole realm. I didn't mean to talk to you. Hang on. I gotta go by. <laughs> yeah, just scouring around for chests real quick. And also stickers. Lost Diary Dancer. Also another birdie. Holy, how many how many are there here? Uh, 
Uh, where does this lead? Does, wait, does this take me back to the, the dreamscape? To Slumber Town? Oh, that's gotta be like the next... Oh, wait, no, it just takes me here. Uh, I'll just walk there myself, thank you very much. Okay, so, yeah, Misha, we need to go talk to him, but... I wanna... Yeah, I wanna go over there real quick. Yeah, can I just head straight to the other side? Whoa, that's a... That's a weird way to travel. Fucking... I just rode on a pinball. Also, I hear Birdie somewhere nearby. Birdie? Uh... Oh, what is this? Dreams of Glory is an ancestral drama that tells the magnificent history of the five lineages transforming the prison world into the planet festivities. Judging with the bright red paint, it doesn't seem it scored a particularly good reception at the Dream Flux Reef. <laughs> Well, rip that movie. I'll say another uh, clockwork thing here. Uh, I'll, I'll do it later on. I think for now I want to just grab all the space anchors. And all the chests too. Yeah, all these manhole covers can be interacted with for some reason. Also, yeah, where is that birdie? There you are. Also, is that guard leader called Vader? <laughs> Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> you ain't no Vader. Get out of here, phony. <laughs> okay, uh, is that everything in this place? Okay, we still have yet to go here. I'm pretty sure you can explore around there. What chests are in this place? 19. Okay. Also, freaking birdies everywhere, apparently. Wow, these guys are, like, super easy to find. I couldn't really imagine what Aventurian missions and depression we get to hear from this place. <laughs> yeah, because Aventurian surely is like somewhere around here, right? I mean, he didn't die to death, but he did die, quote unquote. So he has to be here, or at least somewhere in like Nihility. Oh, so how did I miss on that chest? Hold up a minute. I'm just recognizing my own stupidity. Uh, then where else? I think I saw- wait, no, yeah, I saw a chest down here. Yep. Let me go grab that one, too. Oh, wait, there's one below this. How, how do I get even lower? Oh, wait, what? No, no, no that was it. That was the chest I, I saw. Seems like I can go even lower, though. Actually, no, that, that's probably just there for decor. Also, there's a balloon down here as well, for some reason. Uh, I'll just go ahead and pop it as well. Oh, no, that, that's a bird. Always gotta be the birdies. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we've done everything we could as of right now. If I see any more birds, I'll approach them. But, yeah, let's not dally anymore and continue the story. Hi, Misha. Hi, Clocky. What are you doing here? You're the guest from before. <laughs> we meet again! And a new friend. Uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. What do you mean, new friend? You've met him before. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. We met in a dream. Oh. And who might this be? Oh, you can see Clocky too now? Can everybody see Clocky here? Mr. Yang, you can see him? Mr. Yang, you're still young at heart! <laughs> Your, um, memory zone meme? <laughs> nope. Cloggy is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. Sleepy? Wait. Are you... Are you telling me the fucking memory zone death meme is called Sleepy? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So, this is your home? Yep. After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but 
Ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. It's gotta be referring to death, right? This Sleepy. Can you describe? Oh, you know, he has purple wings uh, for eyes. And also has like a giant creepy eye in the middle. You know, just your casual pet. Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Uh huh. It looks fierce and has many eyes. But it's actually really well behaved. Uh huh. Yeah, been taking care of it. This description, could it be? Based on the description, that meme is indisputably deaf. They call deaf sleepy. It's a nightmare for the family, <laughs> but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. D death? Not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive. And yeah. Sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess, but it would never hurt anyone. So, I mean, yeah, he would never hurt anyone. Fucking several people have been stabbed to the chest by him. What do you mean never hurt anybody? I see. Has it brought back any guests recently? Say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. Also, let's acknowledge that Gallagher's taking care of it. He's taking care of death. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family, and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Um... Visitor from the Yang, Oak family? The person you're looking for... Wait, no, Sunday has to be t here too, right? Is it Miss Robin? What? No, never mind, Miss, Miss Robin. Just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. If it's not too much trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Um, a yeah. With red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh, I... I haven't. But please, rest assured. Dream Flux Reef is a small place. And it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream. But its safety is unmatched. If you say it's unmatched, yet I I heard a uh, some people a couple of blocks back say they got robbed. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions, and then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. Yeah, Sandy got stabbed too, so he should be here. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon, so there should be enough time. Oops. All right then. Well. Uh... Follow your plan. We'll follow your plan. Okay. I no, didn't mean to skip that part. Sorry. I know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penaconi. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. It has to be Gallagher who's behind all. I'm behind it all. That visitor from the Oak family is worth more learning about. That name, Sleepy. It's really not fitting, is it? Uh, no idea. But its connection to Gallagher is worth digging into. Regardless, we have to find him. Say, you mentioned before that you saw a clocky that only you could see, right? Yep, he's right here. He was Misha. He was with Misha at that time. We also saw Mr. Yang. I can't shake off this strange feeling. <laughs> Am I really still so young at heart? I don't think you are. You've killed like several Hershers and been through your fair share of trauma, just like every Honkai character. Forget it. It's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. Yeah, I'm surprised that Welt can't see him, but I, I thought I thought everybody could see him in like this part of the dreamscape. But to maybe Welt is just yeah, actually young at heart. Okay, follow Misha and. Everyone, look. Oh. You can see the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. Is that a black hole? A black hole? No. An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in memoria dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. Hey, who are all these people you're mentioning? I want to go meet them. Look, there she is. Oh, this NPC. My 
calculations are finally done. In another ten system hours, the above dream will swallow the dream below. My hypothesis was correct. This place will cease to exist as the what? dream devours everything. The above dream will swallow what? Should we get out of here then? Hmm? Who are you all and why haven't you left yet? In ten hours, yeah. This place is about to disappear. <laughs> Should we really be here? Uh, what are you doing out here? Then why aren't you leaving? Who are you? I'm Kami, a dreamscape surveyor specializing in Memoria Dynamics. And this is my life's work that I'm researching. See that huge gaping hole? It was just a narrow rift many years ago. But now, it's grown into a giant hole. The surrounding Memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. But the scary part is... According to my calculations, the flow rate of Memoria has recently changed, and it's faster than ever before. It's almost... almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side. By constantly improving upon Madame Rosalina's Memoria measurement method, I've finally obtained accurate results. After ten system hours, the Dreamflux Reap will cease to exist. Just like the melting of glaciers, Everything will crumble and disintegrate. The dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one. So then what happens to us? What, what, what happens to us? Uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Kami isn't a bad person. She's just a bit... lost in her own world. She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. Oh, is that right? <laughs> you don't say. There was a something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? We're very interested in Madame Rosalina's achievements. Uh, could you tell us a little more about them? Why, of course. She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics and the first person to apply Memoria Rate Measurement Methodology on interstellar travelers. Regrettably, due to the presence of the Garden of Recollection, ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature of Memoria. Hmm. She departed this world without much fame, leaving only a few thin journals behind. Sorry if I'm bringing this up, by the way. I just kind of want to just reread just stuff I've. Uh... I came to Metacony to learn more hmm. about my idol and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef, all because this is her final resting place. Prodigies always meet their demise prematurely. If only Madame Rosalina had more time, she would have discovered a way to reverse the flow of Memoria. I felt it. The source is in the Golden Hour. There is a certain anomalous presence stirring the currents of the Memory Zone. I must uncover more concrete proof. I must convince everyone. Okay, you do you, Does lady. Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? Not particularly. It was one of the nameless mentioned by the conductor. Oh shit, was it? That's right. It seems like she did a great deal of research and calculations in Dreamflux Reef. Huh. Before abruptly passing away. It is, so she was nameless, okay. Miss Kami regularly mentions her. I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. The prison war. She could hmm. see the Pentacony of today. It's people. Building homes in the memory zone. <laughs> I bet she'd be really happy. Perhaps. Maybe. Our destination is the commercial district. That's where the largest crowds gather in Dreamflux Reef. We might be able to find the others there. Okay. Hey, there's a girl. I am March. Let me go. Oh. <laughs> March, are you bullying children again? Also, I just noticed Robin's freaking bird goes far. You can like probably like snipe <laughs> like an enemy with this. Speaking of which, hang on. Wait, have I looked back here before? No, I have not actually. Hey, there's not a chest. Also, there's more clocky graffiti everywhere. Do people really love them that much? Oh, I thought I could sit on that sofa too.
Bam. Yeah, the music here is so cozy. It's so, so cozy to the point that this guy is also sleeping, <laughs> like, down here. Uh, oh, there's a chest back here, of course, and also a birdie. How many birds have I found so far? <laughs> March, the hell are you doing? How many birds have I found? Oh, well, 11 of them. Okay, uh, give me a sec. I want to just claim this reward to you quick. <laughs> yeah, now that I just pulled for Robin, I need to immediately start farming for Firefly. <laughs> yep, I found uh, 11 birds already. Thank you. Thank for the clocky credits. And I believe he gives like the free light cone. Oh yeah, the Sam like on at a, when I find 20. We'll do that later. But hi March, what are you doing? Ghost! There's a ghost! Don't come near me! Ghost? Also, isn't this the freaking kid that the <laughs> that the watchmaker was talking through? Oh my. I'm human and so are you. Can you get a grip? Uh, Mr. Yang and Miss Trailblazer, I've been waiting for you. Quickly, come help! Miss Trailblazer. <laughs> Fucking, he thinks he's actually dead. Well, this is how it turned out. You scared him this badly? Now I shall pay respect to March 7. Ghost Dream? Ghost of the Dream Flux Reef. Me? A ghost? Don't make me hit you. <laughs> he thinks he's dead. Although, when I first fell in, I also thought the same. Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. <laughs> this is Dream Flux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat after me. Dream Flux Reef. Hey, a good old sleepy must have dumped something to <laughs> Tim. You're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. <laughs> Yeah, March, now I, uh, now I see you're not the best at dealing with children. Uh, Invisible Who? What's wrong with sleeping in dreams? Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. All of them! Uh, you're not talking about the Memory Zone meme, are you? Uh, don't say that name! It's all your fault. They're coming! What? Wait. Huh? Whoa, who the fuck? Oh, these are new enemies. Deception Crown? What the? Okay, this is a new enemy type. Hang on, let me have a look, see. Restores HP after being attacked, but additionally gains physical and fire type weaknesses, and it takes increased break damage. This thing will be dispelled after being weakness broken. Oh, so he can just give that status to somebody else? Well, that's annoying. All right. Also, I meant to switch to the IPC team. I... <laughs> yeah, we'll do that after this. Oh, they died together. Okay, that's a, at least a good thing. Time to say bye. Never mind, Kip was not actually lying. There's actually like enemies approaching. Where'd they come from? He passed out. Oh. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby memory zone memes. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Why aren't the other people around here scared? Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. But we can't just leave this man here. Yeah. <laughs> can we take him somewhere safe? Nah, we'll just leave him there. He thinks he's dead, so we might as well keep it that way. <laughs> I've gotten to know many locals while waiting for you guys. Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. The real dreamscape, you say? Also, yeah, I want to switch to IPC follow-up team. 
Uh, where are they? Where are they? There they are. Hey, right. let's keep on keeping on. Also, yeah. I, oh, yeah, that's why I wanted these guys up. Oh, God, Numphy, don't get stuck. Where's the chest? Where's the chest, my good old Numphy? Oh, I didn't even think about going this way. Thanks, Numphers. Yeah, <laughs> another reason why I brought up the IPC team. Numphy is really good at fighting these chests for me. <laughs> okay, but find Aunt Jesse. Oh, so I literally just talked to her in the bar. <laughs> I literally bought shit from her. No wonder that name sounds familiar. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? Yeah. Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying on the ground, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. Yeah, we just kind of dragged him along down here. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom in Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. Guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. Why are you all so calm about that? This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady, March? Her songs can heal hmm. mental wounds. A Halovian lady? Uh, what, the singer out front? That must be Robin. Oh. She's also here in Dreamflux. Never Rain. mind, just uh, the actual singer herself. Huh? Robin? But I thought she... Oh, right. If Firefly is here safe and sound, then it means Robin must be okay, too. Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himiko. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stillaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana. Like mm. islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Penacony. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place and the sweet dream. Himeko must be gathering information. Let's hurry up and get going. All right. Let's see how you do the next. Hmm. No. At this rate, the family will be done for. The family will be done for. I'll say another shop is here. Wait. This, is this guy a clown? No, he's an intellectron. T toy merchant. Uh, who are you? Oh, good question. Very profound one. It's Pentecony, um, a stainless stowaway. Okay, well, <laughs> that answers that. Uh, I also have to see what toy it is. <laughs> Sounds very interesting. Okay, what do you sell? Gun. Uh, Scarebox, the fuck? In the next battle, Scarebox will hide on a random unit and explode at the start of the turn, dealing massive damage, the fuck? I wanna try that out, actually. It unsolvable cube. When an ally attacks for the first time, the attacked enemy will heal for an amount equal to HP loss in this attack. For every 1% of the enemy's, uh, the enemy target heals in this way, so characters receive a shield that can block damage equal to Huh. Equal to 100% of the character's max HP. Or 1% equal to uh, the character's max HP up to 100%. Huh. So this means you can just get a shield by attacking. Hmm. Useful, I guess. Uh, delusion blocks and hollow bird toy. Oh god, this, this bird looks fucking traumatized. <laughs> what the hell? This is where we split up. Oh. She can't be There's him, Miko. Also, who's this freaking Giga Chad NPC right here? So that's how it is. Whoa, holy Giga Chad! Gather the remaining details here. <laughs> Micah. <laughs> oh God. Phrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> also, I hate that his name's Micah. If you play RDR two, then you'll know. Himeko, here they are. Huh. 
Perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's currently right. in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. It's a pleasure to meet the Nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacony. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the Twelve Dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah, the Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef, what a title. <laughs> How's that mean, though? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. A tombstones in, in the dreamscape? You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, oh. guiding them back to the sweet dream. Or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. Oh, okay. So there is a way back. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Mm hmm? Hmm? Uh, on that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. Wait, is what? Don't tell me th this fucking guy is like the human personification of, the, of death. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. Uh? An important Gabby? guest? Who could it be? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. Or no, 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 Robin, probably, and Robin. Uh, speaking of Robin, yep, there she is. There's our girl. There she is. Hey, hey, we meet at last. Sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style, but I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. <laughs> These kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. These kids always... <laughs> These kids don't look too amused, though. They don't look too happy. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. <laughs> Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacony. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. Oh. They're not old enough to end Damn. the sweet dream managed by the family. Oh, they just, they just straight up brought in autism in this game. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. I, I didn't think this game would, like, bring up, like, sensitive topics like that. Huh. If we compare people to birds... These kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. Hey, I'm all for autism representation. <laughs> and me, an old lady with no legs. Oh. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. 
Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams. Because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound. Hey, we meet at last. Again. <laughs> it's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance cause quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, <laughs> can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Pentacle? Also, since you're here, can I have an autograph? <laughs> Since I returned to Penacony, uh, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. Right. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment, perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it'd just take some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of memory and as Donna. But now it seems the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. I'm losing my voice. It's just one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. I'm also I'm still kind of somewhat mad at Robin because freaking her pulse took way too long. But nah, I'm not going to hold a grudge against her. It's not her fault. The sweet dreams collapse. That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. Uh -huh. So it's real. While I was away from Penacony. The boundaries of the Twelve Dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, hmm. all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. The land of the exiles, concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Penacony's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable, but the family has experienced betrayal. Uh huh. The traitor. Or traitors. Bandits the family's fucked. Oh shit, I didn't mean to skip that. Hang on, let me try. Let me read that again. It's regrettable. But the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor. Or traitors. Abandoned their original principles and. Using the name of Harmony. Exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities. Trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. Defending the weak, but rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Mm. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an emanator is involved. Uh huh. <sighs> I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Hmm. Let's see what of another entity within the harmony that's capable of influencing everyone, except I guess something super powerful is involved. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Oh, damn. Well, she's not performing then. That's unfortunate. 
I love this amount of sense of Charmony Festival. Oh, the... Where now? The other side of the Dreamflux Reef. Oh, shit. Sunday site now? Look here, brother. A little bird. Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. Yeah, we're on Sunday side for sure. But Charmony doves don't live here. So, how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. But where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? Then it won't have the freedom to fly. Right? Let's see. What is it what? that has captured the attention Whoa. of the two best interpreters of the Great One? Who the fuck? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. Who is this? What? Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do. But I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered, it can't sing. It didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds, they should be flying. Birds should fly. <laughs> yep. That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scholar? Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild... It won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. I think... You think this is the watchbreaker just communicating with these two directly somehow? As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really high. The friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Mm. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature. Their ancestors oh, over generations. I didn't mean to pass the last part. Ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, you mean... To fly, but they find a way to do it through their determination. Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I. Yeah. I think people believe birds are meant to fly because they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself because I... I want it to live, no matter what. Well said, kids. Mm -hmm. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true. In their own way. We will take good care of it. Won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood? Gopherwood? There's one thing I don't quite understand. Mr. Gopherwood? <laughs> and what might that be, my son? Oh! Their father? What if this little Charmony Dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean... If there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky? 
only to see them crash to the ground and die. Hmm. Talking in your sleep, Birdie? Oh. Time to wake up. Oh. I was having a nice dream, man. Come on, why you gotta interrupt it? Okay, Sunday's with Gallagher. <laughs> the first thing you wake up is just like, what the hell? You killed me. You fucking killed me. Uh, gopher wood was used to make the Ark in the Bible. Oh, didn't know that. Huh. huh? Need a hand? <laughs> what do you mean, need a hand? You fucking betrayed me, you cunt. <laughs> Okay, so he just got here. Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Like right over now. there. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. Uh, was that what happened, or did you just kill him with fucking Sleepy over there? If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands, lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? <laughs> After you just stabbed me. Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacone. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is the sense of justice inside of you. Yeah. Show me Robin first. All right. As you wish. Here she is. Huh? <laughs> That's not Robin. <laughs> no, no, no. Different character. Different character. What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. Yeah, like all of us, please. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. Are on the stage. Oh, shit, we're getting on the whole gang together. Uh. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. Oh. The name's inscribed on it. Should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and Tiernan. Tiernan? I never heard that name before. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. Hmm. They were the heroes who saved us Dana, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on the small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, Today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. Hmm. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... They died here? According to Micah, they died long ago. Mm -hmm. Rosalina hmm. was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong mm. and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Penacone faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lampmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. Wait, the swarm? Oh god, not those stupid fucking bugs. Of course it's them. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. 
true to the title of Trailblazer. They spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? Yeah, the middle one. On Why is it blank? When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. Oh, there he is. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. The gang is all fucking here. Well, except for... <laughs> We're still missing a couple of people, but you know, <laughs> mostly people, everybody's here. Robin. Speedy hams. Oh boy, we got a lot of talking to everybody to do here. Let's start off uh, these two. There's no need for words. You're safe. And that's all that matters. Aw. Oh. <laughs> and what about you, GigaChat Micah? I did my job. I gathered everyone here. Gallagher will explain the rest to you. Take care. And you, Misha? The atmosphere sure is livened up with all these people in here. Also, where's Himiko and March? I guess we're here, they're here to talk to uh, Gallagher here. I'll say Firefly. I brought Gallagher here. It's time to face the truth. It's time. Okay, let's do it. I promised to give the siblings some privacy. So let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say? <laughs> I'm Gallagher? putting together a team, the Avengers. You want to join? <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. Spill the beans. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. Uh -huh. I'm the founder of Dream Flux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and... The one who sent out that invitation. That mysterious invitation of ours. Uh huh. The history fictionologist. History fictionologist. My greetings to you all. <laughs> Not as epic as head of the Bloodhound family, but you know, <laughs> still a cool title, I guess. History fictionologist. So what? Everything you told us was made up. <laughs> also, fucking, I fucking love March's I'm done face. <laughs> well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the... Oh, yeah, right. Inviting different factions, and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Yeah, fictionologists are the, uh, the, uh... Egging him out of factions, and also, yeah, they said that, yeah, Gallagher was, I guess, a slate, no, 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 well, like, well, the followers of Egging him out of, essentially. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. Yeah. The Stellaron. There's one here, too, isn't there? The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? The Stellar has been completely sealed. Someone's manipulating the Stellar on. You're pulling your leg again! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say this. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with Earth to make an island. Hmm. To achieve this feat, Without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. Hmm. So they're using a Stellaron to make the whole dreamscape? That's... And that's huh. not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Asdana, 
The planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. What? What? The whole fucking place is a Stellaron disaster. Wow, okay, I didn't expect that fucking plot twist. What? Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago. Back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacony from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power. Hmm. And most heeded their words. Most. <laughs> there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rival saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. Oh. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. Hmm. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Pinnacle under the disguise of the Harmony. Huh, so they're not even fucking following the Harmony at all. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Era of Washington, Dreaming. Mm -hmm. been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. Oh. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. Oh. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb. Becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Oh, what? So just people being fucking happy is what keep what's what keeping the, the Stellaron fucking running. Confusion. Uh, if I'm not confusing cowardly, anything. Weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Penacony, so mm. quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. Uh, uh huh. So, wow. So, the false Enigmata can just do that? The fiction knowledgeist can just freaking just create stuff out of thin air. And just freaking monsters like that Dorothy. of his own volition. That's its real name. Oh. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Penacony to uncover the truth. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Hmm. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. And fucking, I guess I'll figure out who that is then. So the legacy is. Who is this freaking sad. traitor? <laughs> hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. Uh. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Well, now it's time to go interrogate the Sunday, then. Go ahead. I'm sure Mr. Wings holds all the answers. <laughs> Mr. Wings? <laughs> Looks like he just calls him that. As I suspected, 
The core of this issue lies within. The Stellaron. And I guess your, your, your gang just wants a hand on that, don't you? You all look quite serious. Is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> I was not paying attention. What, what's going on? <laughs> all right. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. What? So, we were just staring at a Stellaron in the sky this whole fucking time? <laughs> As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Panacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, oh. the current Dream Master. Oh, and your father, apparently. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive. Hmm. And even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans, and were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopher Wood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacony. Mm. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopher Wood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing. No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself for the paradise in our dreams. Indeed. For the paradise in our dreams. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't like the tone of your voice there, Sunday. What are you up to? As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Panacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here, who can barely even bark. I love that Galaga keeps referring to himself as a dog. <laughs> Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Miss Trailblazer? Ain't nothing to fear no more. We'd win. Here's never back down. Peace was never an option. <laughs> Going up against the Dream Master? Nah, I'd surrender. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. If it's just if the game gives me a funny option, I'm legally obligated to pick it. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations and could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We must hasten. Everyone, let's gather over here. Okay. We still need to make some preparations. The, what are the preparations? I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Uh-huh. Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Hmm. <laughs> How powerful is that Dream Master? I mean, he has control over this whole freaking dream, so he could just wipe us all out if he really wanted to. He's the leader of the families of Pentagoni. Yep. And he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. That too. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. That as well. We must proceed with great caution. 
Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Uh-huh. So I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. Well, let's hope it actually fucking doesn't. I swear to God. still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Um... Oh yeah, Venturine's coin. Um... Here you go. I knew it. What do you need it for? I don't think this will bring us any luck. What do you need it for? As I suspected, this chip Venturine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. Oh. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. My boy Aventurine, he's still out there. I know it. Aventurine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. And for once, the IPC is going to be on our side for, for once, instead of us fucking trying to kill them. <laughs> them trying to kill us all the time. The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Spoken like a true hero. But in the end, it all comes down to a Stellaron. As expected. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Yep. Why would you say so? Yeah. Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Nightwork, if I'm not mistaken. We've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Wait, Legwork? Wait. Huh? Oh. It's not enough to say meat, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. Also, yeah, I completely forgot about, like, Pom Pom telling us about, like, yeah, the track down, or, like, look at the other, like, three nameless. I, I completely forgot about that. I've been watching over you ever since I received a reply from the Astral Express, and I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourself. <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Aw, you make me blush with these flatteries. Keep them coming. Haha, <laughs> of course, my reputation precedes me. Believe in the galactic baseball of supremacy. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pick either of these, honestly. I'm gonna pick. Yeah, you make me blush. Uh, I don't know much about my life story, but I do have extraordinary skills. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last nameless, uh. he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy something that belongs only to the successors of the trailblaze come with me now is the time to reveal it hmm a true 
true legacy. Something that only belongs to the successors of the Trailblaze. Ooh. Follow Gallagher, meet with the Watchmaker. Oh shit, we're about to actually go and see him. Uh, back here again. Oh. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Oh. Like you've still got so much to say, do. Oh no, he's dead. That that's why there's a third gravestone here. I kept my promise. Brought the future trailblazers you've waited so long for. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train. But I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. Whoa! Suddenly? Uh, Whoa! What's happening? Did he fucking like say in a password or something? Oh, oh, okay. Oh wait, those are the two fucking giant towers. Never mind. We're everything's fucking going up. Whoa! <laughs> Oh wait, there's a fucking. Go ahead. His resting place lies in the garden up ahead. But no, no, that's not the palace. No, no, that that's. Oh, there's a gravesite. The first and last nameless of Penacony, Mikhail Char Legworth, the Watchmaker. Mikhail. Oh, what? This whole fucking time, the Watchmaker was a nameless. How the fuck did we? Fucking these plot twists are getting crazier and crazier by the second. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, look at that as well. Look, look, fucking look at that. Also, hey, there's a uh, few things here I do want to grab first. But here, let me just pop these balloons real quick. I'll say a chest here as well. I can't fucking. What? This whole fuck this whole fucking time Mikhail turned out to be a nameless. I never would have freaking thought. And uh this is his final resting place. Wait, there's a chair there. Meet with the watchmaker. Oh uh, wait. Is someone actually sitting on that chair? Who the hell? Oh. Wait a minute. It's... Aventurine? Beneath the, the sea surface of Memory Zone, in a garden closest to the full moon in the water, an elderly man rests on a recliner, enveloped in an utter silence. No, no, okay, I thought it was Aventurine because of the hat. That, that That's not him. The watchmaker, Mikhail Carr... Char legwork has passed into the, that endless, timeless dream where no sound could ever awaken him. Sure enough, the watchmaker is the third nameless. Oh shit! And I could guess that one. The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Even more mysterious than me. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's have a look. As words cease, Himiko nods ever so slightly in your direction. You take a deep breath, set your mind, and then your gaze towards the watchmaker. Touch the dream bubble in Mikhail's hand. Also, his hat. Are we gonna take that and. That's gonna give us the harmony powers? You press your hands against the dream bubble, and the thick, vicious memoria converges again under strain, and then stretches out from your fingertips. As if weaving a delicate web, it gently cradles your palm. A chill travels from your fingertips, carrying it with a mirage of vibrant and intertwined mem memories, as experience will suggest. But this time, you see nothing at all. How could this be? I try to focus on capture memories. Take a deep breath and try to read the memory bubble again. The dream bubble is, is clearly extraordinary. Perhaps the approach is wrong. You think holding your breath and closing your eyes. With one knee on the ground, you press your forehead against the thin film coated in memoria. 
Yet before you, there remains an abyss of darkness. No crimson sun descending upon snow-capped mountains. No gentle laughter, no twinkling stars. No echoes of clashing. Most of all, no trace of trailblaze. There's nothing, and nothing is there. Indubitably, it's but an empty dream bubble. Wait, what's going on? Seriously? Uh, there's nothing inside this dream bubble? Huh. Hmm. How could a dream bubble be empty? <laughs> Just as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. Mm. But this empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. Also see a bird there. I'm sure Mikhail has left us the most precious thing of all. His hat. Let me take it. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker, don't you, Gallagher? I, I love how like we we were all convinced Gallagher was the villain in all this, and then Sunday was the villain in all this, and just yeah, all these characters just, were just turned out to be so mistrustworthy. Then they just turned out to be extremely trustworthy in the end. It's honestly fucking masterful writing. How do you get us to just? Just suspect everybody, and then it just turns out that everybody's innocent in the end. <laughs> well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. <laughs> really, now? <laughs> That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. <sighs> Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales <laughs> Can I- can, can we get Sleepy to kill me real quick? It's for Mikhail, and for the future of Penacony. Oh, Boot Hill! Okay, we're switching his POV now. Ten Boot hours Boot until- Boot How may I help you? Until the Charmony Festival, and hey, <laughs> we're here with Donahun. <laughs> Greetings. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. And we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought... Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. And this is my friend, Pom Pom. <laughs> Imagine we just say that. I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. Yeah, what do you know? And it. Me. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I'm Pom Pom. <laughs> new nameless, who's also with the Astral Express. <laughs> I'm Pom Pom, clearly. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. <laughs> we responded to the family's invitation <laughs> before he boarded the Express. So he wasn't registered in your system. <laughs> <clears throat> Is it? Possible to accommodate him as well. Oh, I see. Another one of the nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. Uh, okay. yeah, they're um, somewhere where service is not exactly available. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable <laughs> to reach the other members of the Astral Express. What? What do you mean by unable to reach them? My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number. 
We'll go check on <laughs> Even been real funny if like his name card here just changed to pom pom temporarily. <laughs> that would have been just like the, the icing on top of the cake. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh, Wilt. I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding forced awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? <laughs> Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. Yeah, what a dilemma. <laughs> it seems so. Oh, fudge. Look, nothing personal. But if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? Uh, please calm down, dear guests. I do recall that <laughs> Mr. Sibley, no, the head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please wait a moment while I contact him. <laughs> All right, let me just contact Mr. Sunday. <laughs> How weird. It seems I can't call him either. <laughs> I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. <sighs> Just don't keep me waiting forever. <sighs> oh shit, I should get to play him! About his companions. I should give him some space. Yes! Dressing out about it won't help anything. Boot Hills POV, Broken Arrow. <laughs> yes, I was hoping they, they did this like the same they did with Aventurine. <laughs> Look, this fucking man's drip. Yep, and he has an actual fucking gun. Okay, what's his uh, skill though? <laughs> oh, okay, it's enhanced ability. Hang on, let me uh, get some more technique points here. Ask around the lobby and wait for information about Don Hong. Okay, I'm gonna change the party lineup real quick because I think Robin supports him pretty well in some aspects. But I believe he wants um I, I guess I keep adventuring around. And then also maybe I'll bring in I'll keep Robin around just because she's new. Silver Wolf probably, because yeah, debuffs are probably what uh <laughs> Yeah, supports him the most. Actually, yeah, what does Boot Hill do? I don't exactly know per se. Oh damn, I can't view his detailed info. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try him out uh, in like the story, like in battles later on. Ask around the lobby and for information to wait for Don Hong. Okay. Hey, you, tell me shit. Greetings. I'm Cody of the Bloodhound family, head of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? Hello. So, uh,. There's something I wanted to ask about. <laughs> I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. Do you think there's anything to be worried about? I've traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation. Hayai Federation? <laughs> My trip ruined. Um, what do you mean? Wait, you haven't heard. I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. What? That can't be right, unless Sparkle's somehow manipulating all these guys to think everything's okay. At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a relief to hear. To hear. <laughs> he doesn't appear to be acting. So, it seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. Hmm. And then what about you, kind miss? <laughs> Stick him up. <laughs> guys here for the Charmony Festival, too? Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about. <laughs> but 
I heard it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I came here just because it just, yeah, it just seems like a cool thing to do. <laughs> well, back in my home world, Anaria, we have festivals like that all the time. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. Oh, come on. The Charmony Festival is a once in an amber era event. Yeah. How can a birthday party compare? Well, you never know, right? Maybe on her world, <laughs> birthdays only happen once in amber era. Yeah, maybe she ages only once every amber era. Anyway, let's forget about that. Have you heard about the, uh, unsettling things happening in the dreamscape? Unsettling things? What could possibly go wrong? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival! I've been looking forward to it! Relax. Okay, so everybody's just in the like dark this, about this. There's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Don't worry. If anything does happen, the family will be on top of it. Yeah, the family will be there to fuck everything up. <sighs> Oh, that's a relief. I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues of these <laughs> two. They're clueless. God, these guys are so useless. <laughs> Mother fudger. Back already? Oh, hey, there you are. Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder. Sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. <laughs> he just Neither the yep. staff nor the guest seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape and wherever we go all we see is people enjoying themselves definitely not a good sign yeah she just comes back yeah i can't call sunday either it's weird <laughs> let me call miss robin oh weird i can't call her either <laughs> i agree another unusual thing is that the oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape. However, I walked around the hotel, but didn't meet a single member of the Oak family on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. I'll be if fucked. If I remember correctly, the head of the Oak family is that Sunday guy, right? We shouldn't linger here too long. Let's go back to the Express for now. Now nah, we're gonna break in. Not so fast. Nope. <laughs> Have you ever robbed the IPC? Bro. Bro. <laughs> Bro. If you run away now, everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing. But let's stay put for now. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain outsiders, so they won't do anything reckless. See? The IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. Also, that's another thing, too. Topa should be around here, right? If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. Mm -hmm. I gave a backup plan to the memo keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the dreamscape, she'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality, a secret signal. That's right. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the memo keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill. If you have more backup plans in the future, <laughs> I hope you'll let me know in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... things can go awry. And that would leave all backup plans completely useless. How do we Fair get points. to the VIP lounge? Do we just sneak on by? Is where my street smarts come into play. <laughs> this is where my street smarts come to play. Die! Ah! Miss a hole! <laughs> ah, Boot Hill, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> You're the lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. 
How may I assist you? Oh, of course, your name is fucking Dennis. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. You know, we wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Is it me or is Boot Hill's voice weirdly soft? Actually, wait, no, it's because I made the music too loud. Hang on, I'll, I'll lower it like after this cutscene. We've been waiting here forever without any food or water. What the fork, man? What the is fuck, man? Guests? <laughs> is this your idea of street smarts? <laughs> Starting an altercation? It's called standing up for your rights. I apologize for the inconvenience. Please wait while we try to contact Mr. Sunday. I'll <laughs> arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there while you wait. Oh, well, well, well worked. <laughs> <laughs> See, just like that. Just, uh, just don't call yourself nameless next Oh, and <laughs> Gondano is like fucking, how the, how the actual hell is this working? <laughs> else. Certainly worthy of the planet of festivities. Give me a second. I want to lower the music because it's like way louder than the voices. So I, I wanted to suggest that. There we go. But okay, Swan, are you here somewhere? Finally, a gun user in Star Rail. I mean, Topaz technically uses a gun. Good evening, Just a magic one made of money. <laughs> Hey, I have an order for a bottle of Asdana's White Oak. Can you help us find it? Asdana's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no way. No sure way. Taken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Well, could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? <laughs> then what should we do now? Oh, no need to rush. Well, let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early and he hasn't come yet. Oh yeah, true. Bronny has a rifle as well, so yeah, we do have gun users in this game. <laughs> Let's see what kind of juice malts you all have here. Huh. Well, uh, give me a glass of Heenum Valley, 40 years. I'll have it neat. No ice. Well, that's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. <laughs> it's on the house, anyway. What can I get for you? <laughs> I would like a glass of water. Anything you recommend is fine. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboom juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. <laughs> Just one minute. Yeah, why does everybody say I have a cool demeanor? <laughs> Flavor. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Ooh, really hits the spot. Truly. Find a sherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Uh, <laughs> is that really something that humans enjoy? Uh, yeah, is that a. <laughs> that, that's not something I would really prefer to drink. What kind of drink name is that? <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. Let's give the memo keeper another half system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities, but the public is unaware of it. Hmm. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions. Let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> if what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is 
a little complicated, to say the least. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about regarding Acheron. Mm. As you know, the faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous folks in the cosmos to mess with. I mean, who in their right mind would impersonate this Yinjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? It's like asking for a death wish. Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that uh, the rainbow set lets their luck's arrow do all the beating? Talking. Do all the talking. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Even though the Galaxy Rangers have been out of sight for years, we've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. But that Acheron lady, she doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. On the contrary, she's highly logical and organized. She knows exactly when to hold back and when to strike without mercy. Speaking of which, Acheron's getting kicked out the dreamscape, right? So sh shouldn't she be in reality right now? <laughs> and do you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a galaxy ranger? <sighs> I'm not entirely sure. I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a galaxy ranger, or perhaps she's trying to lure us out for some reason. Hmm. Which I can't figure out. Imagine she shows up here. Anyway, what worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual. Unless the invitations weren't sent by them. If that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival, hmm. despite the chaos. And that's where our boy Galley comes into this. Maybe it's she pay the harmony pulling the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. I don't think an Eon would send out letters personally. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. Hmm. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't and fudge. They even break their own rules. But eons don't. They stick to their determined path and never turn back. Even if they reach a dead end. You think Shipe's will is behind all this? It may not necessarily be Shipe. There's definitely some higher entity involved. I know it may sound pessimistic, but if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? It's much simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh, so you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because their absolutely right leader is gone? Hey, don't say it like that. <laughs> exactly. I believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right. It's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities even with limited insight and judgment. This is an, an oddly philosophical talk right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect phil philosophical shit out of Boot Hill of all characters. <laughs> I don't know what you've been through, but I agree that people must take responsibility for their choices because no one else can do it for them. That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter and figure out her true intentions. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the memo keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. I promise. <laughs> my final backup plan is to shoot up the place. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. Well, going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. Uh. By the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important looking guests what's your plan it's simple 
We just <laughs> some no, <laughs> I was joking. Or maybe we can even take their identities. No, <laughs> Boot Hill, that's illegal. <laughs> no. No need for that. We'll return to the express now. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? Huh? As Donna's White Oak? Oh. But, okay, never mind. Didn't you just say? Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of Asdana's White Oak just a moment ago. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. Okay, well, we don't we don't have to fucking do illegal shit. Good. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know, too many modifications and all. <clears throat> anyway, let me check. Well, fork me. <laughs> it says Donna's White Oak, all right. And there's a note. Yeah. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. Oh, fucking hell. We have to go back there anyways. No mistake. That's her message to you. <laughs> she knew the hotel wasn't safe. So she suggested we find another place. Well, looks like we took a detour, but now it's back to the Astral Express. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Could you fucking imagine Black Swan was just waiting on the express the whole time for them? It's just like, what's taking them so long? Oh yeah, right, the drink stuff. <laughs> You're back? Two guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill. Uh, so I told them to wait in the parlor car. Is it, uh... Oh, just in time. Our two lovely ladies. Two guests? Yeah, her two. Uh... Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. <laughs> my apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. I assumed you were already acquainted with the Garden. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> in the chaotic situation in Panacone, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly <coughs> trust right now. You are the Memo Keeper. Pleased to meet you. Don Hung. I've seen you and others' memories. And as for Boot Hill, this hey. is our first face to face meeting. I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's white oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, memo keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. That's precisely what I intend to do. But before that, Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is... Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> and I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo keeper. As for Acheron's story... Why didn't you ask her yourself? <laughs> I'm sure she knows it better than I do. Hi, I've been impersonating you. <laughs> Greetings. I'm Acheron. What? You Garden of recollection shirt bag <laughs> you betrayed me i apologize but she did that at my request due to certain reasons <laughs> i have been exiled by the family thankfully this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed we also had a quick dance before you two arrived it was uh it was nice to be honest it was more like stalking than helping and the process was far from unnoticed. <laughs> but we did escape. I asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals. Namely, all of you. Trustworthy? <laughs> Son of a nice lady. Do you think I'm dumb or something? How about this? Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, hey, no need to cause a scene here. Secrets spill out. Then, we can talk about trust. It doesn't have to be like that. I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. If my cover hadn't been blown, we might have had more time, but at the moment, we don't have any other options. No other options? What do you mean? This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. 
I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. What? Out of the whole fucking place? This passenger is requesting... As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. What do you mean, seems? Can you just freaking be confirmative for once? I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts, Don Ho. Please rest assured, your nameless companions are safe, but they need our help. As for Boot Hill, you may have guessed. I've been waiting for you. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. Huh. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Wait, so she planned for him to arrive here as well? I thought she he just he just like kind of stole his identity and just moved on. <laughs> Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. To return his relics to their rightful owner. His relics to their rightful owner? Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens. A sign of their mercy upon the world. Hmm. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods. Shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet. So. So. How long has this rain been going on for? Oh, this guy again. I used to believe, just like you, that it would eventually stop. Whoa. I'm just noticing the fucking creepy hands coming out of the water. And in the end, such hope faded away before the rain did. Looks like the god you mentioned doesn't exist after all. As he spoke, the old man's gaze remained fixed on the distance amidst the fine drizzle of black rain. Countless shadowy hands emerged from the sea, shrouded in ethereal mist, reaching out towards the sky one by one. Well. Let me share a story of the mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. <laughs> Also, this is a cool fucking shot, honestly. Let me take a screenshot of that. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Is this Mikhail that she's with? Like those shadows on the ocean. No, it can't be, right? No, no, no. Synthersters. 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 They emerge from the depths of Ix, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeated the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms they were once my dear companions. Oh. A group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war. A crusade that shook the universe. The universe witnessed the fall of Zuo, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. A price so hefty that only those who were there still remember. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. So someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. 
They were heroes in their time. And they shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of the nihility. As for me, I have suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin thirsters, mm. they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? Well, some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. <sighs> I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm is off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if, and it's just an if, if this is what the departed ones expected, mm -hmm. should we try to change it? A good question. And a profound one. I don't know the answer. What I do know is that one day I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. Hmm. Uh, and that's a robin now. Actual Robin, it seems, not for Sparkle Robin. <laughs> when I appeared as a child, my speech, mindset, and soul reflected immaturity and innocence. Man, part of me was hoping we get to play Boot Hill right there, but no, well, you, you just get to run around as him, and that's it. Hmm. As I grew into adulthood, I left behind my childlike side. I humbly request your blessings, esteemed advocate of Shibe. Come to me, my kinship. I have sought their presence with us. Oh, wait, is, she, is he doing like freaking church servers or something? <laughs> As you wish. I have faithfully served the Alfalfa family for nearly a decade, promoting the path of the harmony to the best of my ability. However, I made a mistake yesterday. While I was preparing dinner for the family head, I accidentally dropped a prepared dish on the floor out of uh, laziness. I lied and claimed that everything was ready. <laughs> Although the head has dismissed me as punishment, it has been tough to sleep with the guilt still gnawing at me, as I worried that the seeds of evilness may have taken root in my soul. So, I confess to you now, to seek atonement for my sins. Do you sincerely repent and vow to change your ways? He's yeah, speaking like a, like a nun right now. <laughs> yes. Have you examined your soul and confessed all your sins? Oh, yes. Are you willing to accept the process of atonement? <laughs> yes. Very well. Show your dedication and goodwill to the family, and you shall be reinstated among them. Now, please, leave in peace. Leave in peace. And also, be sure not to drop my fucking food next time. <laughs> Just imagine. Oh, praise she may. And thank you, esteemed advocate. Next, please step forward. I, I wholeheartedly confess to you. Please, pardon my sins. Uh. Rest assured, I have implored their presence to be with us. As long as you are sincere, absolution will be granted. As I gotta say, this is a really, really cool looking shot of Sunday. I'm gonna take a picture of that, actually. Oh, oh great. You know, <laughs> I, 
I arrived in Panacone as a stowaway. I sold everything to what get the fuck? My house, my land, and my two children. You sold your goddamn children? Excuse me? Take them away. <laughs> You're not forgiven. No, get out of here. <laughs> I see. Please, go on. My children were starving. And I hoped they'd have a chance at survival if they became slaves here. If... If I can strike it rich here, I'll lift them out of that situation and give them the life they deserve. You absolute shithead of a parent. But the Bloodhound family got wind of it. They're on my tail, hunting me down. I thought I could bring my kids here. It, it was all my fault. All my fault. The family is ready to forgive all sinners. I'll ask the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. You don't need to live in fear anymore. Instead, I'll call an assassin to shoot you dead, because that was what you deserve. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll work my hardest to redeem my children and make them part of the family. Praise, praise the harmony. Next. Please step forward. Oh god, please not don't let the, like, the next person be worse than that guy. Hey, long time no see, Mr. Sunday. Hey, 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 hey. Esteemed individual in Pentacle. Shut the the next leader of the Oak family, right? Shut up, you're going to expose my goddamn identity. Shut up. I have sought their presence with us. Let us proceed. Sure. Let's just get this over with. <clears throat> I have sinned, please forgive me. I wasted half a pizza at breakfast and a bottle of Soul Glad. You are hereby executed. <laughs> May she pay smite you down. <laughs> That's it. Nothing more. Can we wrap this up? I've got a robo ball game to catch, you know? Do you seek to atone for your sins through good deeds? My sins? Start to sound like a saint, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Neither the family nor you have the right to judge me. You think nobody knows what your precious family has done? About the watchmaker? Huh? No oh boy. Shut yourself, feather brain. Those dream chasers might be fooled by your act, but don't fool yourself. Before you start spouting off your holy verses, answer me this. Where does the power of the Oak family come from? And your power? What makes you think you can sit there all high and mighty, looking down on everyone else? Well, I've spent enough time in confession today to enter the Harmony's Paradise, right? Then I'll take my leave. Good luck with your election, and uh, don't make me regret my investments in you. Goddamn freaking brats. I should get him killed. Oh, revered triple faced soul. Triple face oh. Hear my doubts. Who can judge the strong when their power hides their crimes? Who can vouch for the weak when they will pay any price to survive? Who can comfort the purest souls when even they get led astray? If the strong defending the weak is truly the foundation of paradise. Then who, who is responsible for the suffering and anguish in this wretched world? Hmm. Brother? Brother? Hey, it's my POV, you know, it's mine, <laughs> not yours, brother. <laughs> brother, are you alright? Are you daydreaming? <laughs> Hello? Fine. I've been working long hours, and I just made a trip to Dreamflux Reef and back. So, I'm a bit out of sorts. Also, getting stabbed to the chest It'll again didn't exactly feel nice. <laughs> You've been working non-stop on the Germany Festival, Mr. Sunday, and no one could have predicted this incident. Even if the Stellaron does pose a grave threat, I still feel sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. <laughs> No need to worry about troubling anyone. 
the Charmony Festival was meant to spread joy and harmony across the cosmos. But now that we know the truth, I'm afraid we'll have to cancel it. It has always been our wish to make everyone happy, so... We'll do our best to explain everything to the Dream Master. I'm sure he'll understand. Will he? <laughs> Even if the negotiation does not go smoothly... I'll refuse to go on stage. Without the Chordmaster, the Harmonious Choir would not arrive. And the Charmony Festival would be just a grand performance, and nothing more. <laughs> I'm relieved to see your determination. You know, since arriving in Penacony, we haven't had any contact with this Dream Master himself. Yeah, uh huh? I'd heard of the heads of the five major lineages, but the Dream Master is a mystery to me. The Dream Master rarely grants an audience, even for us. But, given the urgency of the situation, he's agreed to meet us in person. <laughs> Perhaps he'll be the first guest to meet the Dream Master in years, Mr. Yang. Let's hope we can reach a consensus that satisfies everyone. Indeed. Let us hope so. It's about time. We'll have to get ready for the meeting. Mm. I apologize for any inconvenience caused by the urgency. Don't worry. I'll be waiting here. Oh, dear. It's Mr. Sunday! Yeah. Hey! Come over here! <laughs> Shut up, kid! God, all you Papashis are so like damn annoying. Needs help. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Thank you for everything you've done. I'll be waiting here. Yeah, you'll be waiting there, all right. But okay, boys. I think this is as good as a point as any to stop for now. Yeah, this story is probably going to extend on for like much, much longer. Oh, hey, and then everything's going to come to a grand conclusion. <laughs> we got, wow, we got like four paths here. Robin, Boot Hill, Robin, question mark, and then the Trailblazer. And then everything is going to come together at the very end. <laughs> yeah, but end the experience for now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at the freaking Watchmaker. Still looks weirdly good after... Also, he has a freaking monocle as well, I just noticed that. <laughs> I guess, like, bodies can't deteriorate in the dreamscape, so I guess he's just sleeping here for all eternity now. But alrighty, folks. Also, hey, Micah's right here as well. We can change his emotions, apparently. I kind of want to see what, the, what that's all about. But as of right now, I think we're going to go ahead and end off the stream for today. I finished the story for almost six hours. Yeah. Uh, he, these these stories are, like, so, so long. They definitely take way more than just three hours to complete. So I think I'm going to be stopping that for today, everybody. So, yeah, we successfully pulled for Robin, even though it costed me to break my F2P status. We did part of the 2.2 Trailblaze mission, and we will continue that all tomorrow in tomorrow's stream. And, yeah, tomorrow we'll hopefully reach the conclusion of the Panacani arc. And I can't wait to see how it all ends. But alrighty, guys. That is where we're going to end things off for today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck on your Robin pulls. And, uh, yeah, I wish you all the best in pulling for Robin or Topaz. And hope you have fun in the 2.2 Trailblaze mission, which I will continue tomorrow. But alrighty, guys. That is where I'm going to call things for today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully, like, yeah, your Robin summons go better than mine did. And, yeah, hope to see you all again in tomorrow's stream. Take care. Have a good night, and I'll see you all again. Bye-bye.